How engineers do it? Before we start today's video, I would like to ask all my viewers to subscribe to my YouTube channel How Engineers Do It. So share the video among all of your friends and also hit the bell icon to never miss another update. In this video, we will try to understand what is estimate at completion in project management and also explore some of those formulas used and some of the scenarios which is presented in the PMP exam. Firstly, let's try to understand what is estimate at completion. When a project is in motion, there are a lot of moving parts in it. So there are a lot of dynamics, uh, maybe due to a risk which got materialized or there is a rework and uh, due to the rework, uh, there is a cost overrun or there are some, uh, uh, there are some resource availability issues due to which uh, there is a delay in the project, right? So all of this uh, causes uh, the cost overrun or there is a delay in the project. Now it's important to understand uh, so this EAC is important to understand because only then we can efficiently manage the remaining funds in our project. Now uh, there are four scenarios presented in the PM PMBOK. The first one is uh, when we are given uh, estimate to complete, right? Now I'm going to take uh, the four scenarios on four different slides. So let's go to the first one that is based on the bottom up estimate to complete. Now the formula for this is the easiest one whereas uh, this is the most difficult to implement for the PMs. The reason being that uh, in order to get the ETC uh, the PM has to estimate all the remaining uh, tasks from bottom up. But if in the question it's given that the actual cost is given and the estimate to complete is given, then uh, the formula is easy. You just need to add the actual cost and the estimate to complete, and then you will get the EAC, right? Now, going to the second scenario. The second scenario is based on budgeted rate. Now, when you say budget rate, you need to understand that the past performance is not considered here which means CPI and SPI will not be a part of the formula. Now, in simple words, the formula is just uh, adding the BAC with the difference of actual cost and earned value. Now, if you see here, the actual cost is here, EV is here, right? Now, if, you, if it's difficult for you to remember the formula this way, you can just remember it this way, right? So that is actual cost minus earned value. Now what's the difference of that added to the budget at completion. Now if this is a negative value, if this is a negative negative value, then you're performing well in the project, which means the estimate of complete estimate at completion will be lesser than the BAC. Uh, you will understand more about this once I take you uh, through this example, right in the end. Now I'll take you to the uh, next scenario. Now that is based on present cost performance. Now there are two cases presented here. One is based on uh, present cost performance and one is based on present cost and schedule performance. Uh, in a while I'll, I'll be explaining what's the difference between both. So for, firstly, let's look at present cost performance. Now this considers the uh, performance, the cost performance which uh, the project have been uh, uh, showing until now the time that we are you're calculating the EAC right so the, the simple formula for this is just BAC divided by the CPI right so you can use this formula if in the question it's mentioned that calculate the EAC based on the CPI the present CPI right now if in the question it was mentioned that calculate the EAC based on budget rate then you will have to use this formula now, the next one is based on present cost and schedule performance. Now, in this case, you can remember this formula over here, which says AC plus BAC minus EV. 
Now all you're doing here is in, for this section you're dividing it by CPI multiplied by SPI right now the formula which you need to remember is only this and uh, for CPI and SPI you can just add divided by CPI and SPI right now obviously a question will come to your mind that why is this formula the easiest that is BAC divided by CPI and this formula when you add the schedule performance into picture the formula gets bigger now the next slide explains you that right now what I'm doing the formula is written just like this a a c plus uh, b a c minus e v divided by c p i multiplied by s p i right now if the s p i is not considered that schedule performance is not considered then it's assumed as one now if you just substitute one over here then that is uh, a c multiplied by uh, sorry a c plus b a c minus e v divided by c p i just c p i now you need a common denominator denominator so you're keeping CPI and multiplying CPI over here so that is AC multiplied by CPI and CPI's formula is EV divided by AC so AC and AC cancels out so all that remains is EV plus BAC minus EV now EV and EV again cancels out that is BAC by CPI that's the formula which you can see here right here yeah BAC by CPI so all you need to really remember is this formula this formula is the uh, uh, is the formula and if you're just adding cpi1 and spi1 then you're getting this formula sorry this formula right if you're adding spi1 then you're getting the bac by cpi formula so that's how it is right now let's go to one of the examples uh, so here you can see the budget of the project is thousand dollars and you're, you're halfway through the project but plan to be at 75 percent and you have exhausted the budget now what is uh, EAC based on this now uh, by just by reading the question you should be able to tell what is BAC what is EV what is PV and what is AC in this uh, question now you can see budget is thousand so obviously BAC is thousand here right let me just write that down for you so BAC is thousand now you're halfway through the project now if you say you're halfway through the project that is earn value you have earned that right so that is halfway means 50% of BAC right 50% of BAC that is 50% of thousand which is nothing but 500 now uh, what's remaining plan to be at 75% now planned value will be 75 percent of thousand now that is a 750 right now finally what is it uh, actual cost now it's also said that you have exhausted the budget now what's the budget thousand so AAC is thousand right it's as simple as that now the question is asking you to calculate the EAC based on all of this different scenarios right right so the first one is budgeted rate now you know the budgeted rate formula is AC plus BAC minus EV so you're coming here that is yeah AC minus EV by uh, plus BAC is also fine so that's thousand minus five hundred plus thousand right so that's thousand five hundred Right, so the difference between actual cost and earned value is 500. Then you're adding that to the budget. That's 1,500. Now EAC. The next uh, scenario is present cost performance. Now you're just dividing the CPI, uh, BAC divided by CPI. Right, that's 1,000 divided by 500 by 1,000. So 500 by 1,000 is 0. 0.5. Now uh, 1,000 by 0. 0.5 is 2,000. So EAC is 2,000. Now in the third case, you're also taking into account CPI and SPI. Remember the uh, the the third uh, scenario which we talked about. Now that is AC plus BAC minus EV divided by CPI and SPI. Now that is thousand. That is AC plus thousand minus five hundred divided by 0.5 into 0 0.6. Right. Now that is two five one five. Now, final one, you can see remaining tasks are estimated to be $900. Now, when you just read this, you should understand that this is a bottom-up estimate, which is whatever 
tasks are remaining for the project now that is estimated to be nine hundred dollars now you know that your uh, your actual cost till now is thousand and you know the estimated uh, remaining tasks is 900 so that's just 1000 plus 900 which is 1900 so that's all so uh, I, I try to explain this in the most simplest format with a simple example so i hope you understood the concept and it's important to understand the concept uh, while you're answering questions in the pmp because uh, some cases you don't see the numbers you don't need to use the formulas but you have to understand the concept to answer the question so I hope you enjoyed. Thank you. Stay tuned.